Hello, I'm Lee Brad Lloyd, and this channel is all about creating a smart home with Apple HomeKit. I'm happy to share another great thread-enabled product from Eve today, the Eve Aqua. Thank you so much to Eve for sending me this product for my review. There are no strings attached, so I can assure you, you will get my honest feedback. I also want to thank you for supporting my growing channel. I can't believe that yesterday marked three months since I uploaded my first video to this channel, and I'm really enjoying creating HomeKit content and sharing my smart home with you. Every like, every comment, and every subscriber helps my channel more than you know. Earlier this month, Eve released a firmware update that now provides thread support. The Aqua is the latest addition to Eve's rapidly expanding lineup of thread-enabled devices, and wow, with spring here, this came at the perfect time. Speaking of spring, I watched Apple's Spring Loaded event this past week, and I was really happy to see that Apple's added thread support to their new Apple TV 4K. This is going to become available to order on April 30th, and it ships the second half of May. This means that you'll now be able to use either a HomePod Mini or one of the new Apple TV 4Ks to take advantage of Thread. Today I'm bringing in an expert to explain Thread in more detail. Hi, I'm Ashlyn and I'm here to talk to you about Thread. I've done some extensive research and my dad talks about it a lot, so I'm basically an expert. To make it easier, I drew this picture in Procreate. So let me break it down for you. Devices in a thread network can communicate with each other. Routers are typically devices that can be plugged in, like the HomePod Mini in my room. Endpoints are typically battery operated, like the Eve Aqua and Weather. The coolest things about thread are that it's self-healing and low power. Self-healing means you can move stuff around and the network will adjust itself. If there's ever an issue with the connection, devices can find another path. It also doesn't slow down my Wi-Fi network, so my favorite YouTube videos don't freeze. Thread is pretty cool. Thank you so much for supporting my dad's channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Back to you, dad. Thanks, Ashlyn. That was great. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The addition of Thread is a major upgrade to the Eve Aqua since it was previously reliant on Bluetooth, which is notoriously unreliable with minimal range, especially outdoors, where it's often difficult to maintain a solid connection with your home hub. Now the firmware update applies to the second generation models. If you already have an Eve Aqua and you're not sure if you have a first or second generation, then I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. If you don't have a HomePod mini or a second generation Apple TV 4K, then the Eve Aqua will still work using Bluetooth. If you experience issues, you can always consider adding an Eve Extend. It's an additional $69.95 Canadian and you can buy it on Amazon. Honestly though, if you're serious about HomeKit, then I strongly recommend a HomePod Mini. I'll link a recent video I did on the HomePod Mini up here. Okay, let's jump in. For those like me who don't have a built-in irrigation system, the Eve Aqua is a must-have for smart homes in the Apple ecosystem. This is a HomeKit-enabled smart water controller, and it connects easily to a standard spigot and hose. Have you ever turned your sprinkler on in the evening, got distracted, and then woke up to a flooded yard in the morning? Sadly, I have. It's expensive, and it's bad for the environment. Without a water controller, keeping your lawns and plants watered is high effort. Best case scenario, you have to turn on your sprinkler, set a timer, and then you still have to go back outside to turn it off. Let me know in the comments if this has ever happened to you. The Eve Aqua makes watering your lawn and garden easy. Not only can you simply ask Siri to turn your sprinkler on or off, but you can also set up a schedule to water your garden automatically. This works even if you're anywhere else in the world, as long as you have a home hub, which includes a HomePod, Apple TV, or even an iPad. Having a home hub is an essential part of HomeKit, so you can securely control your accessories when you're away from home. Let's look at this out of the box and I'll show you the installation. Out of the box, the Eve Aqua comes with the main water controller as well as two included AA alkaline batteries. To insert the batteries, lift up the cover and then simply insert the batteries. When installing the Eve Aqua to your water faucet, Eve recommends not using any tools here so you don't damage any of the parts. 
Once it's attached to your faucet, simply attach your hose. Once it's attached, make sure that your water is turned on. Next, to set this up, I used the EVAP. Simply follow the step-by-step -step instructions until it's complete. At the end, make sure you download any firmware updates. Then, make sure it works. I've had this installed for a couple of weeks now and it's worked flawlessly without any issues at all. I recently put down some topsoil with some grass seed and if you've ever tried to grow grass before, you know watering is essential. The seeds can't dry out so daily watering is a must or the seeds won't sprout. I'm also thinking about putting in a small vegetable garden this year so the Eve Aqua will be a lifesaver. There are a few ways to control the Eve Aqua. By touch using the button on the unit within the home app or directly in the Eve app, where you can also use a schedule, which I'll cover in a minute. If you're worried about your kids playing with the water, there's also a child lock feature, which will prevent someone from turning the Aqua on by using the physical button. Because the Aqua is HomeKit compatible, you can also use Siri. And what's nice is because it has a default timer, you can just ask Siri to turn the water on and it'll turn off automatically. Having a default duration is a really helpful feature so you don't forget to turn it off. One thing to mention here, let's say your default is 10 minutes and you want it to run for 20 minutes. You can say, hey Siri, turn the sprinkler on for 20 minutes. And this will work, but it will also update your default to 20 minutes. So not a huge deal, but it is a little inconvenient and something that you should be aware of. The default duration is something that can be set up in the home app, but it's in the Eve app where you can really see a lot more information as well as customize your schedule. You can see the Eve Aqua from your at a glance page or you can find it directly in the room. You can add any of your HomeKit accessories to the at a glance page, which is like your favorites. From here, you can long press to see more information. You can turn the water on or off or set or initiate a schedule. In the schedule, you can customize up to seven watering periods per day. Under last watered, you can see the last time your Eve Aqua was on, and by pressing the arrow, you can see a log of all the different times that you've had it on, as well as the estimated water consumption. If you really want to, you can even export this information. Next is the default duration that I was referring to earlier. Just press the arrow to adjust. For estimated consumption, Hit the arrow to see your estimated water consumption and hit the I for more detailed data by week and month. It's based on the flow rate, which can be manually configured. Consult with your sprinkler documentation for a more accurate estimate. Okay, let's create a schedule together. Start by pressing the gear to get into the schedule and simply select the days that you want it to run, the time and the duration and click save. It's really that easy. I'd like to turn the sprinkler on each morning for 12 minutes. Note here that the duration for this automation will not affect or override your default duration that you set up earlier. Under schedule suspension, Eva's created a scene for pausing water today or for today and tomorrow. You can also install their Siri shortcut, which will help skip watering if it looks like it's gonna rain. Now this is helpful, but the issue is you have to manually ask Siri each day to check the watering. To automate this, Eric from Modern Day Tech has created a helpful shortcut that will skip watering when the chance of precipitation is over an assigned percentage. So I'll link his video in the description so that you can check that out. One issue I have with the schedule is that you can only control by the day of the week. But where I live, we have strict watering bylaws where we're only allowed to water on either odd or even days based on our address and no later than 10 a.m. during the summer months. Eve says that HomeKit doesn't provide the option to use odd or even days for automations. So to set this up, I had to create a Siri shortcut. 
I actually piggybacked off of modern day text shortcut for checking the weather and I added a condition that also pauses watering on odd days. Now I'm sure there's a more sophisticated way of scripting this than how I did it, but it works. Now keep in mind, this is not a professionally installed sprinkler system that has calibrated sprinkler heads throughout your yard to ensure each place of your yard gets watered. Depending on where you're trying to water, you may need to move your sprinkler around. For example, I sometimes need to move my sprinkler from my front yard to my backyard. You could also consider a splitter, or if you have multiple outdoor faucets, you could add additional Eve Aquas for even greater functionality. What are my overall thoughts on this product? I like the Eve Aqua and I think that this is a great product. It fits really well into my smart home. No more forgetting to water the garden or even worse, forgetting to turn the water off. The Eve Aqua makes watering effortless and with thread added, I'm really happy about the connection and reliability. The Eve Aqua is on the expensive side, coming in around $150 Canadian. But considering the benefits that I showed you earlier and its convenience, I do think it's worth the price. There also isn't much competition and it's the only HomeKit enabled water controller that I'm aware of. It connects directly to a standard hose spigot and as I mentioned earlier, it integrates seamlessly with the Eve app. I'll leave an affiliate link in the comments if you'd like to purchase the Eve Aqua and add this to your smart home. This helps support my channel as I may get a small commission with no additional cost to you. I'd also like to touch briefly on privacy. Eve has taken some great steps to design their products to safeguard personal data. No data is stored in the cloud, so whatever happens at home stays at home. If you want more information on this, visit evehome.com. That's it for this week's video. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the Eve Aqua. As always, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.